What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We are back. It is round three. We're going to be talking about one of our prediction videos. Today is a big one. It is Wales versus England. There is going to be so much to talk about this one. I'm actually going to put the game on for a little bit longer in the background while we talk about it just because there's going to be so much to cover. I thought it'd be fun to check on a created Wales team that I have versus a creative England team, make it a little bit more interesting in the gameplay in the background. So let's kick this game off and let's have a look at the teams that have been brought out for this Wales England game. Alrighty, so Dan Bigger is going to get us kicked off here. So I have a lot to talk about, about both of these teams coming into this game. Uh, I probably have more to talk about on the Wales side of things, so I'll actually begin talking about this England squad that's going to be coming into this game because I'm sure I will ramble about the Wales team <laughs> later on. So first of all, let's talk about England. England had a very comfortable win, I think you'd have to call it, over Ireland. Uh, it wasn't really looking like it was going to go either way at any point. They looked very in control. This England team is becoming very, very dominant now across the board in most ways. They managed to beat Georgia at the forwards game. They beat Ireland in the backs game. I think they're beginning to show they've got some real depth now. And this starting 15, they tend to put out their sort of standard team that Eddie Jones likes is becoming a real force to be reckoned with. And I think by the time this gets round to the next World Cup, they could end up being very, very dominant. I think they still need to have a couple of changes. There's a couple of little chinks in the armour that I will get into in this team. Um, but overall, that performance against Ireland was very, very good. Uh, I was impressed massively by Johnny May's tries. You can't take it away from him. He had a brilliant first try where he just ran the length of the field, beating about five different players, managing to get that try. Johnny May's one of these people that I think everyone considers him to be like one of the best wingers in the world. For me, I actually think it's not particularly true. I would probably consider him one of the most inconsistent wingers. He's definitely not bad, but he's one of these players that is so good when he turns up to a game, but sometimes he turns up to a game and he's just not there and he is borderline unutilizable. Is that a word? Who knows? I'm not going to make up words on the spot. We saw him in the Georgia game where he, he only touched the ball a handful of times. I know they were playing a much more forward-based games and maybe the weather wasn't completely on their side, but every time he touched the ball, he, he almost kicked it aimlessly down the field. Uh, he's one of these players that if you give him the advantage and he's there to play that game properly, he will be your greatest asset. And if he plays a team that he's not really up for, he wasn't involved with the game too much, people aren't giving him the space to work with or anything brilliant to do, he really does doesn't manage to sort of shine out a little bit. So in that way, for me, he's a little consistent. I know a lot of people will probably disagree with that situation, but that's my belief on him. So let's check on the screen this England team that's coming into this game to face Wales. So here it is. What a big team this would be. I'm going to give you a fun fact here. I looked it up just before filming this. From this starting 15, there is only three changes made from the team that played South Africa in the World Cup final. <laughs> I was really surprised by this. Wales have not been on the best form at the minute, and they have just come off that six losing streak, managing to beat Georgia. Uh, I actually thought Eddie Jones might go slightly soft and try and put on a slightly lesser cap team just to give some people a bit of international time. He obviously doesn't believe uh, that Wales are to be sort of disrespected in not putting on a big team. He obviously wants to make sure they win that Conference A group. They are currently going to end up being about the same level as Ireland until they manage to win this Wales game because... Ireland, I'm pretty sure, will go on to beat Georgia no matter what. Uh, but Eddie Jones is not messing about with it. So, first of all, let's have a look at this front row. Maka Vunapola, Jamie George, Kyle Sinclair. Very, very strong front row. Uh, we know that they're going to be brilliant in these forward games, having seen what they managed to do to Georgia and just sort of tore them apart. I wouldn't actually be surprised if we see a very similar game tactic in this Wales game, knowing some of the attacking runners that Wales do actually have that just aren't quite performing at the minute. I think the England pack will want to be dominating that forward. And I think the way to do it is with well, this front eight entirely, to be honest. Um, Mario Otoje and Joe Launchbury. Joe Launchbury bringing only one of the few changes from the World Cup they played, where originally they did have Courtney Laws. Uh, but Joe Launchbury is just as good to bring in, if not better. An absolutely colossal man. He's doing brilliant work at lineouts and he's doing superb work in terms of rucking as well. Tom Curry, Salmon, Dehill, Billy Vunapola as a back three, as I've mentioned throughout this tournament. 
is just a sensational back three to have there. Um, Tom Curry, brilliant in terms of turnovers along with Sam Underhill. Billy Vunapola is your danger man who can just carry the ball through. Takes about three men to tackle him, knowing full well that even if Billy Vunapola makes the tackle, you have Sam Underhill and Tom Curry to counter ruck and steal that ball over in a turnover. I think that's a, one of the best six, seven, eight combinations in the world, I would say, at the minute. There's no real weak link in any of those three. I think they're all brilliant and they can all pick off a screen they can all turn over they're all danger runners I think they've got a brilliant forward pack and they're going to be playing the forwards very very heavily in this Wales game and to be honest I think the Welsh will probably struggle quite heavily to deal with this we saw what basically these exact players did <laughs> against Georgia and I don't think Wales are going to be completely up for what England are going to bring in this match in terms of their forwards Looking at the backs, uh, Ben Youngs is going to retain that number nine. He's been playing very well, to be honest. He had a very good end of the Six Nations. He hasn't had a particularly outstanding uh, Autumn Nations run, but he does what he does, and he's very consistent at doing it. So you can't take that shirt away from Ben Youngs at the minute. George Ford is coming back in at number 10. I think this is going to be a key feature for this England game. They were coming up against Wales. They've played a couple of different tactics. We've seen what they did against George. We've seen what they did against Ireland. I think coming up against Wales, they know that Wales are going to be looking to try and get a bit of an upset here. I think most people would be expecting England to win this game, given the forms of the two teams. And I think Eddie Jones knows he's actually got the pressure on him for the first time in quite a while for one of these games where it's just pretty much accepted that England should be looking to win this game without real contention for, for Wales to steal it. So they're going to mix up their game plan here. They're going to put George Ford in at number 10, putting Owen Farrell back at that 12 position. This is what's going to mess up this game because it means that any of the VTs or any of the, the footage you get to look at from their other two games, their game plan is going to be completely different from how they're going to work those two games. Puts Wales at a huge disadvantage not knowing how they're going to play. They now have to look back at the Six Nations even before the Six Nations at how England were playing to try and gauge how Eddie Jones is going to manipulate this England team into being a winning side and I think he's done a great job there. Uh, Johnny May, as we spoke about, is going to retain that number 11. No one's going to beat him for that number 11 shirt. Henry Slade at number 13 is having a really good uh, tournament. He's one of those players that does an awful lot of work and has a really high work rate, but I feel doesn't really get looked at enough in uh, in rugby circles as being quite an outstanding player that he is because he does all of the background work. He does all the nitty gritty. He's the guy that gets the offload that gives another guy a try. He's the one that kicks the ball through that gives someone else a try. He's the one that makes the last ditch tackle but won't turn the ball over when you've got a Sam Underhill over the top. He does all the gritty stuff that no one looks at and I'm very impressed by Henry Slade I think he's having a great tournament uh, Jonathan Joseph coming back out of his weird leg injury that took him off uh, a game ago and he's back in he played the Ireland game he's playing this game that injury obviously wasn't as big as we all were led to think uh, I think the right wing is probably the only weak link for this England team they did struggle with Anthony Watson on that right wing obviously Anthony Watson not in Jonathan Joseph hasn't particularly impressed me on this right wing either. I mean, I, again, I think it's a bit of a problem that they're not really giving him enough time with the ball or enough space with the ball. Anytime he seems to receive the ball, he's almost immediately tackled because he's got the ball a little bit late or he's being used as a bit of a back line player where you've got a lot of first receivers coming off of that ruck. He's got to stand sort of the second, third receiver. He's normally the guy that ends up doing the miss pass and <laughs> he never seems to actually get the ball on hand. Um, but I think he's going to do a little bit better in this game. Um, his opposite number that we're going to go into later on the, on the Wales team will probably be Josh Adams that we will look at. So, I mean, he's going to have a bit of a tough game there, but he is a rapid player and still a very good player. Uh, Elliot Daly's going to get that 15 shirt again. I would say probably the best fullback England have at the minute and was always going to have that position along for his uh, counter kicking from the back. So a strong, strong 15 from this England squad. We'll quickly look at the finishers. Uh, Luke Cowan Dickey gets to come back into the side. We haven't seen him for a little while, so it's been nice for him to get a game back in. Ellis Genge just being the rhino that he is, powering through people, he's going to do well. Will Stewart and Johnny Hill are also going to be coming back in. Uh, ben Earl, who I was actually quite impressed by um, when we saw him not long back. Uh, he's doing very well in that position. Uh, Jack Willis had a great little debut and then got dropped immediately, <laughs> which was a bit of a shame for him. Um, so it'd be nice to see him do a little bit more work. He did very well in that flanker position. He was being very, very aggressive. Um, so I'll be looking forward to seeing a bit more from him. Dan Robson coming in on that 22 shirt. He's going to be wanting to have a good game. And then, of course, Anthony Watson, as we did mention before, has managed to come back in now in this finisher position. I have no doubt he will come in on 14, probably about the 50, 60 minute marker to add a bit of speed and injection of uh, aggression back into that side that's where it will begin to work open I'm expecting this England to be a very similar one that faced Georgia 
playing the first half almost entirely through forwards and then once it begins to break down a little bit you can get the strike runner attacks I think that's when Anthony Watson will be coming on along with sort of your Henry Slades and your Johnny Mays to try and carve through some open lines through some tired forwards but overall a very strong 23 from England and Eddie Jones has not been messing about so let's move on and talk about this Wales side so Wales, of course, had their first win against Georgia in uh, six games, which is uh, quite a shame to watch as, uh, as a Wales supporter myself. I was expecting them to have a much better tournament than they were going to. But after that Six Nations, it was uh, always in doubt a little bit. So one of the big things that I did notice after that Georgia game was a lot of people still sort of having to go at the Wales team for only being able to beat that Georgian team 18-0. And I, I thought there were a lot of positives to take away from that game, along with the fact that Wales put on, I would call it a B-side, you know, you could even say a C-side Wales team playing an A-team Georgia, who are not a bad team. I know they get made to look slightly bad in this cup just because they're playing teams that are so much better than when in terms of England and Ireland. You know, you're talking about teams here that are, you know, top four or five in the world playing a team that's, you know, 10th or 12th. There's always going to be that separation in teams. But I think for a C team to come on and still beat an international team on its own to nil is quite an impressive achievement. Um, there were a lot of players there making debut and a lot of people did actually really impress. Um, Johnny Williams for me did very very, very well on that number 12 position. I think missing Hadley Parks left that 12 position slightly open for Wales. And I think Wayne Pivax had a bit of trouble replacing him. But overall, I think given the conditions, the sopping wet rain, uh, it was primarily just a forwards game against a team of forwards like the Georgian pack. I think they were always going to struggle. And I think an 18-0 victory was actually quite respectable considering the, uh, the conditions they were playing in. And there were a lot of positives to take away from it. With that being said, the team that Wales have put up against England are going to be slightly different to what I thought they were going to do. So let's check it on screen for you guys now. So obviously a couple of people have impressed in this. Most notably, you've got your, your Shane Lewis Hughes there at 6, James Botham at 7, uh, and Johnny Williams making his way in at 12. This was a little bit different. I did have a little chat with my friends earlier in the day, and I put this up as a prediction. Um, so it's not entirely far off. So there's a couple of big things there that I'm quite interested in. They have picked Ryan Elias at hooker, who I don't think has been performing brilliantly this, uh, well, going even into the Six Nations, going into this Autumn Nations Cup. I much prefer Elliot D. He's been doing much better at line-outs, and I'm very surprised they've started with Ryan Elias. Maybe they're hoping they'll be able to come on in the second half and make a big impact if the game is close enough. I think I probably would have started with Elliot D there. Um, likewise, I think I would have probably wanted to have Jonathan Davis on. Jonathan Davis isn't actually in this team as a whole, which makes me think maybe there was actually an injury that I've been made unaware of. Um, but Nick Tompkins taking that 13 shirt, who to me didn't really impress superbly in that Georgia game. I thought he was going to do a lot more, but again, conditions, rain, makes it a little bit tough for him. Um, but as a front row, Wynne Jones, Ryan Elias and Samson Lee is a strong pack, is a heavy front row. But whether it will be able to compete against the England front row, I'm not 100% sure. Jake Ball coming in at four, which uh, was a bit of a surprise for me. I actually thought they would go for Corey Hill, uh, who again is not in this team entirely. Um, Alan Wynne Jones taking that five captain shirt, he has to be. Um, and then I've mentioned the six seven combination. Obviously, it did come from that Georgia game that Tipperick did get uh, knocked out in that game, and there was big talk about whether or not he'd make it back in time for this. Obviously, he hasn't. So going in again, another change for me here. I probably would have changed out uh, James Botham for James Davis. I think he's a much more sort of complete player at the minute and then maybe brought him on later. I think Wales' game is is playing this game probably a little bit better than they should do here. They've, they've basically gone for picking a team that's a mix of the team that played Ireland and the team that played Georgia. I think that's a good idea. Um, but I just think they've picked some of the incorrect players for me in positions. Um, from the team that I said earlier on, I actually would have kept Reese Zamet at that 11 shirt where he's comfortable. Josh Adams is a much more experienced player and should be more helpful being used on that right wing. Um, I probably would have swapped 11 and 14 round at that point. And I also think putting Reese Zamet up against Johnny May is a big issue. I don't know if he's got the speed or the strength to deal with him, whereas I think Josh Adams could probably be able to defend him a little bit better. So this back line for Wales has actually had quite a big shift around. You've got your Lloyd Williams there at nine, which is nice to see him starting. Again, think I would disagree with having Webb on the bench. We'd probably want Gareth Davis over Webb. Um, Dan Bigger at 10. He was always going to be starting. Josh Adams as normal. Uh, Johnny Williams gets to make his way in number 12. Very happy for him. I think he had a great game against Georgia. I think he's a real competitor for that 12 shirt going forwards. Nick Tompkins at 13. Like I said, probably would have put Jonathan Davis in, but not sure of injury status. Um, Reece Samad at 14, would have had at 11. And then Lee Halfpenny coming in at 15, having dropped Liam Williams completely 
which is a big call for me. I actually think Liam Williams currently is working better in that 15 shirt than Lee Halfpenny. And I think it'd be much better to bring Lee Halfpenny on in the second half in order to have some longer range kicks if Dan Bigger had to go off injured or what have you. I actually think Lee Halfpenny would be a better substitute coming on. So, looking at the replacements, Elliot D, Reese Carey and Tom Francis. And not a bad second row three to put on there, but again, struggling against that England front three, I think. Will Rowlands, Aaron Wainwright. I'm really surprised Aaron Wainwright isn't starting. That game he had at number eight versus Georgia was very, very impressive. And I would have liked to have seen him keep that number eight shirt. Uh, Faletau getting in. I don't think Faletau's having a particularly good year really, and it would have been nice to have seen Aaron Wainwright keep that number eight shirt. Reese Webb takes that 21 shirt. Again, I, to me, I just would have had Gareth Davis. Reese Webb's, I don't think, doing the best plays ever been. That game against George, he came on in the 70th minute, and f for the remaining 10 minutes of that game, just seemed to kick the ball away and just give it back to George. It's not the technique you can do against England. You're not guaranteed you're going to get that ball back like you are when you play Georgia. Um, I think I would have put Gareth Davis on there. I know Reese Webb's good at getting a try, and he, he got one against Georgia, but at the same time, not a lot of that work was completely done by him. It was done by other people, and he just got to reap the benefits. I think Gareth Davis is a stronger number nine than Reese Webb. I think that's where a lot of people probably have some disagreement with me. Callum Sheedy and Owen Watkin to finish off. Callum Sheedy had a really good game against George. Actually very impressed from a man I don't know a lot about. And Owen Watkin, of course, going to come into that centre. Will probably come on. Well, he can come on in either place, but I think he's more likely to come on at 12 against uh, instead of Johnny Williams in order to have that 12-13 combo. So as the two teams are looking, I think England are definitely coming in with a stronger team. I think they know they're coming in with a stronger team. And I think most people would probably believe that England are going to be winning this game. In terms of a prediction for this game uh, I'm going to say it's also going to be an England win I don't think Wales have put out the strongest team to actually win this game I think this has been a bit of a half and half they want to try and do as well as they can but also give some people some international time um, I'm going to say my prediction is going to be England to win I'm going to say England to win by 21 I think they'll get three tries over I think the first half will be quite close actually um, I, actually, I think it'll be a whole forwards game. I think England might get a try or two. I think Wales are going to be relying heavily on penalties for this. England are looking pretty disciplined and not giving a great deal of penalties away. And I just think their defensive line is doing so well at the minute. They're going to have to have a bit of luck to try and get through. So unfortunately, as a Wales supporter, I'm going to have to say England to win this one. I think it's going to be a real good game, but I think the forward pressure that England bring is always going to be a, a big, big issue. But I hope you've enjoyed this video today, guys. If you have, make sure you drop it a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel just to keep up to date with all of these prediction videos as they're coming out. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.